Questions for oral answer. Question number one, in the name of Andrew Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Finance. And it is what reports has he received on the New Zealand economy? The Honourable Speaker, Stephen Joyce. On behalf of the Minister of Finance, the Reserve Bank this morning issued its latest monetary policy statement. The Reserve Bank indicated that economic growth has slowed since their previous forecasts. They now expect growth of around 2 to 2.5 per cent over the next 18 months before increasing to 3.1 per cent in the year to March 2018. The bank cut interest rates from 3 per cent to 2.75 per cent and signalled they may cut further. They expect inflation to be back in the 1 to 3 per cent target range early next year. Uh, lower interest rates, of course, support businesses wanting to invest and also help households with a mortgage. Supplementary, Supplementary Mr. question, Andrew Bailey. What are some of the drivers of the Reserve Bank's economic forecasts? Uh, the Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, the Reserve Bank's lower growth outlook was driven in part by a softer international outlook, particularly in Asia, which has led to financial market volatility and renewed falls in some commodity prices. This has been offset to some degree by expansion in the United States. Closer to home, the Reserve Bank also outlined a number of risks, in particular the decline in export prices and lower business and consumer confidence. The bank also highlights several factors continuing to support growth domestically, including robust tourism, immigration, uh, the large pipeline of construction activity in Auckland, and importantly, the lower interest rates and the depreciation of the New Zealand dollar. Supplementary, Mr. Supplementary Speaker. question, Andrew Bailey. Given global economic uncertainty, how is a lower interest rate supporting New Zealand's economic resilience? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, New Zealand's independent monetary policy and floating exchange rate frameworks are natural buffers from which New Zealand is now benefiting following recent volatility in the commodity prices and increased global economic uncertainty. Rising interest in exchange rates in the upswing of the economic cycle lean against growth and reductions in the interest rate and exchange rate support the economy when growth slows. For example, US dollar exports that were worth 100 New Zealand dollars in July last year are now worth around 140 New Zealand dollars. Exporters that were forced to become more efficient when the exchange rate was 88 cents US has reaped the rewards now the exchange rate has fallen. Mr Speaker. Supp supplementary question, Andrew Bailey. What other reports has he received on the resilience of the New Zealand economy, and how does that compare internationally? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, Treasury have collated a list of which countries have, one, a broadly balanced government budget, two, have net debt less than 40 per cent of GDP, third, have economic growth greater than 1.5 and fourthly, have scope to further cut interest rates should the economic situation worsen. New Zealand meets all of those criteria and is in fact doing considerably better in some of them. There are only four other OECD countries in the world that meet those criteria. The others are Australia, Norway, Iceland and South Korea. So by those measures, the economy is well placed to deal with any turbulence in the international economy. Question number two, the Honourable Annette King. 